Okay, we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show superstar, Mr. Ian Buchanan. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Hi, guys. How are you? Fantastic. We're good. Look at you standing there in all your glory, you old big. You look gorgeous. <laughs> Still, what are you, 112 now? Uh, next, next year, 111. Yeah, look 111. at us. 111. Look at you. Still handsome as they come. I don't believe you. Look at that. Are those teeth yours? I want them. Uh, you can buy them. I, know, I can tell you we get them. I'm <laughs> telling you. You know what? I wouldn't dare smile because I've had some dental work done. I look like a pumpkin right now. I've got two missing, and I'm oh. very t tooth conscious. You know, listen, you're like 50, right, or 49 or 50. Am I right? No, a little, little higher than that. All right, we're not going to talk about it. Neither am I. I'm another old goat that's trying to look gorgeous and young, and you're doing a good job of it. I'm not doing such a good job. Aren't you thrilled with the new Hollywood gossip that we're hearing? That all the older men are far more in demand now than the younger stars. That's more work opening for guys our age. And look well, at you with that smile. I'm going to smack you. You're so handsome. That's great. I'm just, Get him I'm off here. the show, Jimmy. Get him off. Let me introduce him. No, I don't want to introduce him. He's too good looking. I can't. Do <laughs> I'm not doing this show. Goodbye. All right. So what's up? So everybody, this is Ian Buchanan. Let me introduce you. This is my outrageous co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Say hello. I'm drinking. I have dry mouth because I'm looking at him and I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got, the man you've got the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Hello, Ian. Who Hi, says, Chad. Who Hi, says 50 is not gorgeous? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Actually, though, there's an age gap between you guys. So I'm a lot older than you. I'm 75, and I'm pushing for the old wow. goats, the real old goats. You're a baby yet. You're in your early 50s. But... Um, I have a job now. I'm playing a cop in a couple of weeks in a movie called Quigley's Christmas Adventure. No, you're not allowed to say that. Stuff. Oh, I'm not allowed to say that. I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. And I'm thrilled to pieces that now they're having men, my, actors my age working again. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It really is. So, yeah. well, hang on, hang on, hang on, because you're getting out of, out of whack here. So, okay, so we have a chat room full of people, lots of your fans. How about say hello to everybody in the chat room? Hi, hi, everybody. Uh, I don't know who's there, but I'm sure I probably know some of you. Uh, good, nice to see you, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. And it's cold here in California. That's why I'm wearing a sweater. But how uh, cold? Oh, it's in the 50s. I think it's colder than New York actually. You're kidding? Well, New York is ridiculous. It was 72 a couple of days ago. Uh, actually, we're 60. We're up to 60 right now. So. Okay, that's nice. 60 is comfortable. You can wear sweaters and and, and jackets. Yeah, I guess um, last night was like 32, so it was pretty cold. I hear an accent. Last night. Where are you from? Uh, originally from Scotland. Oh, Scotland. You're Scottish. Scotland. Yeah, huh? Well, I could do, I could do a, more of a Scottish accent, but I, I paid a lot of money to get rid of it. So now it's fashionable. So yeah, well, I accent. tried to get rid of my Brooklyn accent. didn't work. Well, it's, but that, Brooklyn's very charming. Thank you. That's what everybody tells me. It's a charming accent. I said, it's illiterate, oh. illiterately charming, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have to say hello because we just had on the phone a second ago, uh, we had our times mixed up, but we just had Sean Kane and he told us how you're like the nicest guy on the planet and uh, he thinks you're f absolutely fabulous, so he told us to make sure we say hello to you and wish uh -huh. you a Merry Christmas. Hey, uh -huh. I'm sorry I missed him. I, so, uh, I, I haven't seen Sean for a while. I love him. He's great. We always have fun working together. There so now, go. tell me the truth because I will admit it if you admit it. Don't the women flip over us? <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. When I was younger, they didn't because they were afraid. Now that I'm an old man, they think I'm adorable. I have every old broad chasing me, and I say, I'm gay. They say, I don't care. I don't need sex anymore. I say, what makes you think I don't have sex, you old bitch? You know, so I do you have all the old dames throwing their, their maiden form bras at you? I've always, I've always said a lot of uh, older older lady admirers, yeah. I always have that. I mean, you've got to be they like... They weren't afraid of me when I was younger, so I don't they know. They were afraid of you or they weren't? They were not. Uh, they were afraid they were of me. They thought I was a stuck-up, tough guy like a Brooklyn Mafia, which is not true at all. But uh, you, I can imagine, as a young fellow, is just as handsome because you're very handsome, and I'm so proud of you because most men your age look like shit. <laughs> and, and you're just doing a wonderful job at showing the world that 50 and 50-plus... 50 can be fabulous, as I work very hard at looking good at my age. Um, so, are you married? Uh, I'm in a relationship. Yeah, oh, you're in a relationship. relationship. That, you like her? I like him. Oh, you're gay. You have a boyfriend. Yes. I, I, oh, have, I, I didn't know yeah. you were gay. See, he's shocking. You didn't tell me he was gay. I, I, 
I didn't know if it was. If it was oh my! I didn't know if it was public know knowledge, and so I didn't want to bring Wait. it up. <laughs> you know something? This this fucks up my entire speech, because <laughs> here I got a straight guy that looked decent for a change, and he turns out to be a gay guy. All gay guys are gorgeous <laughs> at fifty. What the frig are we doing here? So big deal. You're fifty and you're gay. Naturally, you're magnificent. We don't ever age. I wanted you to be straight so I could say to the world, look, a straight guy for a change looks good at 50. <laughs> I, I, I so tell me straight. about your boyfriend. You're going to marry him? I married Jimmy, you know. Jimmy and I are married. We got married in New York three years ago. Jimmy, I think Jimmy told me that yesterday. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm, yeah. He likes to take me out of the closet every now and then. <laughs> he gives me a mothball airing. So tell me about the guy. He's not 20 years old, is he? No, no. Good. Go no, for no, older no. ones. They're more stable. Yeah. Like Jimmy, I got an old bag. <laughs> I could have gone for those okay, okay, cuties. I love him. I want to hang out with him. I know. I know you want to hang out with him. You, you guys are about to – are you relocating soon? Yes. We're going to relocate to Palm Springs. Yep. California. Yep. Right. Yes. Because I lived there for years. I, I'm, I'm really the true bisec, a bi, a bisexual and also bi – I'm not bisexual. Coastal. I'm bi-coastal. Bi-coastal. That's what I want. Jesus. Talking. Big difference. <laughs> That right. I'm the the original. Now listen to me, handsome one. Do you think it turns the broads off? I don't think so. Women like no, in your I'm, age that it I'm not, I, I I think it's 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 not, not really. It's not. I'm not particularly gender specific. So I kind of like. I don't. I I don't. I think it's just who you are and what you present. And you know, I think good people are good people. So. There are a lot of women watching, saying, "What a waste." No, I don't think so. I mean, they say that about me. I, oh, I was at yeah. a club one night, and two women were headed towards me, and I knew what was going to happen. And one's talking to the other, hitting each other with the elbow as to say, I saw him first. This is in Boca Raton, where the 100-year-old women are. And right. uh, one started talking to me. I said, girls, before you go any farther, I'm gay. And the other one turned around, and she said, oh, I don't care. And the other one made a disgusting remark. I oh. didn't say it. She said, oh, gay men eat better than straight men. And I said, please go away. <laughs> Please go away. Okay, this Just is getting too guttery. Go for away. This is too guttery. Well, I'm from for Brooklyn. Me. You know. Anyway, that's what straight women think of gorgeous gay I men. I think. I think. I think it doesn't make any difference. I'm a big Adam Lambert fan. I don't know. Do you know who Adam Lambert is? Yes, I Singer. do. Okay, I'm a big Adam Lambert fan, and uh, I tweet with him a lot on Twitter. And he's got you know a million females that follow him because almost everybody who follows him, as you do, I mean your followers, when they found out they were, you were coming on the show, they're all beautiful, super nice. Women, like I've been tweeting with all of them all week long. You have the best fans ever there. They love yeah, you to death for all the body of work that you've done and the fact that you're nice to them. You know, you tweet to your fans and like it's a really like nice thing to do. And I don't think it makes any difference uh, either way because Adam Lambert, I mean. No, but it's not you. You know Jane Russell, the name Jane Russell, the movie star? I've met her several times. Okay, Jane and I were the best of friends. Dear friends, she stayed in my home, I stayed in her home, and I dated her. As a gay man, of course, I took her to Shelley Winter's birthday party to Florida to gentlemen that prefer blonde screenings. And people, my name is Russell, Ron Russell. And they thought I was her husband. That's how, Or they thought I was her son. Are you Jane's son, husband? I'd say, no. Well, are you Jane's son? I said, no. We just share the same name. But I have news for you. If I wasn't gay or whatever, I would have married Jane Russell because I was crazy about her. She was the nicest lady in the world. Yes, she was. I met her several times. Yeah, she was my she was my best bud. All right, so yeah. let's go. Let's talk. Let's get off of the whole dating and gay and straight thing a little bit. First of all, okay, one qu more question I got to ask for Ron, and then I've got my own like topics I want to talk about. But uh, Fran Drescher is like his favorite comedian. Another actress, one that knows. And you were on the nanny. Like, oh you no. You have to just tell I... us about being on the nanny because he loves Fran Drescher, and that that's his ultimate guest is to get Fran Drescher. Another one. I just went through the whole routine with the other guy. <laughs> Fran Drescher, to me, is Lucille Ball, every comedian rolled into one. She is the most brilliant comedian today. She's charming. She's gorgeous. She looks like Rita Hayworth. I'm crazy about her. I have had celebrity friends and celebrities on this show. I know every freaking body in the business. I know her ex-husband. And, and, uh, get out the question. But, but i, I got to get Bill to it. I know Lainey Kazan well. She's been on the show. I hang with her. Goddamn Fran Drescher doesn't acknowledge me, know I'm alive, and won't come on the show. <laughs> you figure that one out. You f And you know what? She comes from Flushing. I come from Astoria, one town away. We look alike. We sound alike. What is her problem? Like I said I before, she married the guy that, that built the, the media. What is his name? That, that, the fella. He's a multi-gazillionaire. 
So I figured maybe she went snob. She didn't. Jimmy and I went to the gay pride parade in Philly. There's Fran Drescher in dungarees up on the stage talking to all the people like they were her best friends. She's wonderful. Wow. She's great. I love her. You so did you have fun friend. being on The Nanny? Yes, I did. I had great fun. I had, uh, I had met her several times before, and then I, I guessed it. I, I did one episode. I was like, I got her engaged and stole the ring or something. I remember that episode. Yes, yes, you were. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. I've seen it a thousand times. I should. I just had to bring it up because I thought it was like really cool and he would like it a lot. No, it's amazing. The travel, the circles I travel and I meet everybody. I had a TV show for years out in California where I interviewed the greatest celebrities of Hollywood. So that opens doors for me. By God, if I, if I, I miss her by a minute. Everywhere she is, I miss her by one minute. It's wow. the freakiest thing in the world. Freaky. So do you have a number? Call her. Tell her to call me. <laughs> <laughs> if if everybody does, oh, I like then the she glasses. will. Okay, so oh, well, I just put them on. Now, now I can I can see how how handsome he is. I can see that. <laughs> oh um, yeah. Oh, well, for seventy five, I look goddamn good. Yeah. But Great, trust, trust me. Thank my doctor too. No. no. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. First of all, I have to say, because I, I, I stopped watching soap operas really in college, but I was, a, I was a huge General Hospital fan. So even though, like, I know you won your Emmy for The Bold and the Beautiful, and you've been on All My Children and all those other soap operas, like, my mom watched Young and the Restless and As the World Turns as I was growing up, and I used to skip classes every day to watch General Hospital, of which you were fabulous in General Hospital. I loved it. Um, Thank you. So I thought first thing I would do is like do some bragging for you because like stars never brag for themselves. But I do. You have five times nominated for an Emmy. I think you won on the fourth time, maybe it was, uh, right. that you got it. Um, so congratulations, first of all, on being nominated five times and winning. Um, at least at least you won one. It would have been great to win more, uh, but at least you won one, and it was very exciting. I even watched. There's a video of you winning on YouTube, so I even like watched it. And um, uh, so how was that? Because that's a kind of like for a for a, especially for a daytime soap opera actor who, who's done a lot of soap operas, that's kind of like the epitome of, like, it doesn't even get any bigger than that. How was that? It was great. It was very exciting. It was in the days when the, uh, the, the show was at Radio City Music Hall. So it was a huge, you know, they closed up all the streets in New York, mm -hmm. between 6th Avenue and over to 7th Avenue and have a red carpet outside. Thousands and thousands of people. And it was very exciting. It was a great, uh, it was a great honor. I think it was the first time in my life that I wasn't angry or angry at something or about something and I and, and I've never forgotten that so I mean, it was I it was, pertaining to work I uh, just pertaining to everything just everything in life, life. always life, like that was, life in general yeah life in general so I was very so it made me it was a great honor made me very very happy and I still am very proud of it and uh, it's kind of nice because people say you know Emmy what you know they put that it's like being you know like having a title before your name is kind of also sweet. it raises your your salary a little, which uh, unless they fire you once you win it. <laughs> Pardon? What is that? <laughs> usually you win it, then you get fired. Usually oh, oh, yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> well, that sometimes happens. You know, yeah. I often, I often wonder yeah. whatever happened to that great actress who was in Virginia Woolf with Elizabeth Taylor and Burton, Sandy du Sandy Dennis was her name. Dennis, yeah. 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 Whatever happened to her? She won an Academy Award and disappeared. I don't know. And she was a fine actress. That has and happened she, to so many Academy Award winners. I, I, I saw her on stage in the 80s. She was still working. I don't, yeah, Sandy, but You do worked. a lot of stage work, right? I do. I have. I, yeah. Um, I do a lot. I don't do... Uh, I, I do... It's, you know, stage work is very hard and takes a lot of time. And uh, if I had time and I can schedule it, I'd do it. But uh, I'll probably do some more. I'll do theater next year, probably in New York. So. Where are you now, New York or California? I'm in California. You have a gorgeous apartment or house. I see the staircase behind you. Yes, thank you. I love yeah. duplex. Is that an apartment or a home? It's a townhouse. Oh, see, I, we live in a townhouse too, except it's so small. Is your townhouse small? <laughs> uh, it's uh, not really small. No. How many <laughs> square feet? It's about 2,500, I think. Oh, that's good. We got robbed because they didn't tell okay, us. We don't need to tell no, him. No, he's my friend now. i got to tell him. He's my buddy. <laughs> we got robbed because they didn't tell us that the basement with a window counts in the square footage. Oh, right. So we wound up living in 1,700 square feet, coming from a 3,000-square-foot home in California. I have furniture and storage. I live like a gypsy. <laughs> Until we move back. We're, We're moving so back. We're moving back this summer. Can't wait to get back to Palm Springs. You'll come yeah, visit. Palm Springs is great now. It's a lot of fun. Will you and your guy come and visit? 
Yeah, I have my friend just, I have friends there. My friend just opened a beautiful restaurant that's called 849, and it's okay. a huge restaurant, very successful. So I'm going to get out there pretty soon. So I can well, we're check putting it. together a Glamour Boy Club. John Barrowman, you, the other fellow that was on, we're all going <laughs> to, and we're all gay men married. So we're going to hang with our boyfriends. <laughs> And it's going to be. And when we walk into a restaurant, the world's going to drop dead when they see all these gorgeous gay men. You know, <laughs> your guy, my guy, the other guy, John Barrowman's guy. I mean, it's going to be like... I love freaking... John Barrowman, actually. You know, he's, his family, his father's from my hometown in Scotland. We I love, love John. John's demented. He's gone. He's crazy. But we love him to death. Did you know he almost stuck his ass on our show? Oh, did he? Yeah. He had a blow-up doll. <laughs> He was when and we brought was, him on. He was making out with the blow up doll and when he first came on, and he everybody was, he saw him. He was sticking his tongue into the open round mouth of the blow up doll. <laughs> he is so outrageous. We flipped a, a crazy show, and we flipped out. I said, John, we're never going to be able to surpass that ever, ever. Now I look on Facebook, and there he is. His ass is out. He's in a group yeah. shot. He and, did and, a photo shoot with the cast of Arrow, and everybody's sitting in it, and, and he's, he's behind. He's with, backwards with his ass with his out. pants down. <laughs> I said, he's not shy, I'll say that. Oh, yeah, no. he's not shy. But he's fun. He's a nice guy, and he's such fun. So let's go back. So, like, okay, so you've done a whole bunch of movies. You've done done a lot of uh, daytime television. Do you have a preference? Do you like one better than the other, or is it just nice to mix them up? I like to mix them up, but I do like uh, I like doing daytime. I like going working with the same people every day for a while, not forever. And I like the yeah. pace of it. It's, I don't like sitting around. I like to go to work and you know, work the whole a full day and then come home and uh i'm do I'm, i start a movie in january and i think it's going to be pretty it's a pretty rough schedule we're going to be in bhutan and uh i think i'm filming i'll be there 25 days and filming for right. like 20, 20 days so it'll be pretty but that'll be good though it'll it's a long easy. shoot 25 days yeah so yeah. okay so according like, to nowadays years ago it wasn't three yeah. months was an well, average shoot so some of the films, like, because uh, you've you've got some really cool roles, like uh, Panic Room is a really cool film. I love it a lot. Some of the people in it now, like Kristen Stewart, wait, who wait. plays. He was in Panic Room. Yeah, he's he's the realtor, right? You were the realtor in Panic yeah. Room. That's the the Jodie Foster film. Yeah. I love that film. Um, and and now oh. a lot of people fr from that film are like such huge stars. Kristen Stewart was kind of like getting started out back then, and now you know she's got the whole Twilight everything. Jodie Foster was in it. Forrest Whitaker was in it. Uh, Jared Leto, who's like won the Academy Award, was in it. Um, so, so number one, do you reflect on like you're in all these things, and now like everybody in it is 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 very very successful. And number two, how how was that like working? Because you're actually in the scenes with Jodie Foster and Kristen Stewart. Yeah, it was great. I think it was Kristen's first movie, and uh, it was it was great. I had a great time with her. She was a great kid. I actually knew her uncle was stage manager on Bold and Beautiful. So I kind of was, I, I, I knew her slightly and I knew him very well. So it was very sweet. And you know, she was there with her family and because she was very young and it was a great experience. We were on that movie for quite a while because it happened around the time of 9-11 and mm -hmm. everything got mm -hmm. delayed and uh, Jodie got was pregnant and we had to reshoot stuff. So we were together almost for a year. Did you know Jodie was gay at the time? Uh, did I know? I knew always yeah. since she was a kid. I knew she was gay. Couldn't couldn't miss I, it. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't think about it. But well, it's I, nice to work with family. I I did a movie. I can't say who the person is because he's quite famous today, but he was gay, and uh, we all knew it. And I stupidly said to him something about because he said you're not going to bring me out or anything because I was interviewing. I said no. Why would I do that? Everybody knows you're gay already. And he said what? People know I'm gay. And I thought, hello? I mean, they say your name, and after it, the, the thing is, well, you know, he's gay. I mean, it's like everybody in the world knows he's gay. And he was absolutely bewildered by it, just really thought that no one knew. I said, who oh. the frig keeps you from the world? What does your manager put cotton in well, your you ears? did a gay movie. Make, you did a Christmas movie. <clears throat> I did, yeah. Make the Yule guy gay. Can we see it I on think, Netflix? I think I, I play the only straight person in the movie that's, that's a switch do you know john uh wait, 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 oh wait, wait, wait write it down i don't want to forget no, it i'm, not gonna forget I'm old it. i forget second. everything i don't care i'm talking oh. uh so this, what, what are you two like at home is this just is like this, this? Just like this <laughs> with, with, with the magpies that's why everybody mag like follows like, they love they love it when we argue but like he's monopolizing and i want to like talk no so. i love this 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 uh, look you got those jerky young ones on i don't know what the hell they're talking about i got a guy here <laughs> That knows what I'm talking about. That's I, okay, and you've talked. I jump on it. No, no, I, so, no, okay, so make the Yuletide game. Can we, can stop, we... stop. John Lindstrom. 
not Lynch, John, who came on, who I love. John in, Lindstrom. In that wonderful movie. Yeah, John Lindstrom. Do you know John Lindstrom? Very well. I love know. him. Please, when you see him say Ron Russell sense is very, very best. We actually had a fantastic show with him and uh Love the man. It got love like him. three million plays. This show will get a lot of plays too. It got I got John Lindstrom and um and John Berriman are two like highest plays. They're not a, they're not necessarily the biggest the most well known people. Not the but biggest everybody names. Everybody like loved them. They're right. such such right. really nice guys. And John uh, Lindstrom did a did a My phone screen. Let me grab it. Okay. John <laughs> What's he going to, you going to the bathroom? I have to go too. No, he said his phone's ringing. Oh, <laughs> I, I love it. I'll we can be, see uh, your stomach. <laughs> or, or, order an extra pizza for us. I'm waiting for uh, I'm waiting for UPS, and I thought that might. Be okay, that's <laughs> okay. So go back though. So you did a movie, make the Yule Tide gay. Is that movie actually available that we could see it like on Netflix or anywhere? Uh, I'm not sure where it is. I think it is. People see it. I think every every Christmas it, they people see it someplace. I always get like the title is familiar to me. Make the Yuletide I, I, gay. Yeah, I would never forget that title. You also did a movie, American Loser, with Sean William Scott. What was it called? American Loser. I can't remember that. <laughs> Don't you love it? Don't isn't, you love isn't it? Isn't that cool though that you do so many things? Because I've seen a lot. Okay, but you also did Twin Peaks. Are you in the remake that they're doing now? No, I, I, I would like to be, but I'm not, I don't know anything yet. I don't, I'm not, uh, I would love, I, I would like to be, yeah, it'd be great, but we'll see. Oh, we should try to do something then. We should I don't tell, know. We should like tweet know. to them and tell them that they need to bring you back uh, for the new uh, the new seasons or the new episodes or movie. I think it's, it's a movie that they're doing, right? I think it's a movie. No, they're doing, uh, 18, uh, they're doing 18 episodes. We had somebody else on the show who was in it. Well, I can tell you one thing. You are going to work more in the next coming years than ever before because you've got what they're looking for. You're handsome. You're older. You're, you can play many parts, many parts. Uh, it's wonderful what's happening. You're, you're just starting your career, my friend, because wow. you entered a new Hollywood. No, it's... Don't 70 just is the new 40 is the uh, title of wait, the article we just read. Let me explain something. What they're not 70 yet. <laughs> everybody everybody we know is a producer. Even Jimmy's producing this movie that I'm in next month. <laughs> Sleep with the producer, you get the part. Um, every producer we're talking to is saying, we want the young audience and we want the old audience. What we do is we get Robert De Niro and we tie him up with the young person and we put him in a film. People from all over come. Barbara Streisand now is supposed to be doing Gypsy, playing the mother. She's having a difficult time casting. I, I understand that, uh, what's her name, the one with the meat? What's her Lady name? Gaga. Lady Gaga was supposed to play the young girl part, but for some reason Barbara said no, no, no. What they're doing is they're bringing all the old stars back and putting them in with like Miley uh, Cyrus to make the film happen. Yeah. So therefore, here's work for all us gray heads. Excellent. I don't have your name. I mean, I I was theater and and nightclub more than I was movie, but you're a big shot in your field. So they're going to be knocking on your door, handsome face. I shall I shall keep in touch with you and let you know how that goes. <laughs> well, you're going to be hanging out with us in Palm Springs. I told you, John, me, all the crazies. So we've got we got a few minutes left. Let's talk a little bit. So you have a thing called the Citizens Band. Yes, I do. I wrote it down. Avant-garde cabaret collective of international performance artists reminiscent of the Weimar era, whose acclaimed yeah. theatrical presentations deal with controversial, political, religious, and social themes. Give us an example. Uh, well, the last the last show we did was about uh, reproductive, female reproductive rights. Uh, we usually do uh, – I think next year we're going to be – Focusing, you know, towards the election, we'll, you know, encouraging young people to get out and vote. Who's uh, going to vote tend, for? Donald we, Trump? No, don't bring that up. no, we tend to be a um, little, pretty far to the left. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we talk about, you know, we did a show on, on health, on the whole health issue in Obamacare was nice when they were fighting to, 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 to pass that bill. So. Do you think Donald Trump has a chance? At, at what? <laughs> <laughs> at uh, cleaning up Fifth Avenue. <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, I, I have. I think, considering he destroyed the skyline of New York City, I don't. I, I don't have much hope. So. Right. That's an interesting uh, viewpoint. I've never heard that one. Yeah. After he destroyed the skyline of New York, that's quite interesting. Because I'm a New Yorker, and I yeah. love the old skyline. Yeah, I did too. So I actually, like. 
Do soap operas shoot? Because don't a lot of soap operas shoot in New York? Or did they used to shoot in New York? Do they still shoot in New York? Silver Cup, nope. right? Left, left, there's only four, and they're all here in California. Okay. So who's yeah. shooting at Silver Cup? Uh, they never. I don't know if they ever shot there. They were actually. I think Silver Cup right now is probably Lena Dunham and maybe. Uh, what's the other big show out there? That's. Uh, oh, I can't remember. The, got, a detective show with the Ma Jane Mansfield's daughter. They uh, shoot Law and there. Order. They Law and shoot, Order yeah. shoots there. Aren't they, I, I thought they were in Manhattan uh, over on the pier. The, the, no, the no, West no, no, no. Law and Order shot out of Silver Cup. And Silver Cup. Oh, go right I like Queens the Plaza. They use Queens Queens Plaza as their backgrounds. Which is right downstairs from Silver Cup, and there's a few wow. other shows that shoot out of Silver Cup. Now they're building another big. Uh, they, Astoria Studios is back, and they're building another big studio in Queens Plaza also. So, oh, great. Uh, yeah, film is coming to New York. Mm. Good. So you have a ton of fans in the chat room. A lot of them are asking questions. How about <laughs> things like? Do you have a particular out of all your out of all your daytime? Uh, soap opera, different roles. Do you have a character that you liked better, or a soap opera that you enjoyed more working on? Uh, I liked. I played a psychiatrist on Bold and Beautiful, and I liked that character very much. Um, he was. Uh, he was. A, he was just a good guy. He was a good character. I liked. I loved my character on General Hospital too. You know, Duke, Duke Lavery was a great character. Um, you, those, those all two. your characters are like all your characters because like you're always like the ladies man. Like I I didn't watch Bold and Beautiful, but like on uh, on um on General Hospital because I used to love Finola Hughes. Uh, yeah. I mean I still love Finola Hughes, but like back then like I hadn't figured out that I was like gay, and so otherwise I would have liked you more. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought Finola Hughes was so like so wonderful, and I thought she was so nice, and it would be so great, you know, like. Like to to like know her and stuff and like and I saw actually recently I saw a picture on your Twitter stream with you were with her so like obviously you still stay in touch. Yeah, we're very close. One of her uh, one of her son is my godson. Oh, co congratulations! You know, I, w I would like to ask you a question. I'm going to bring up a name from many many years ago when you were a youngster. Did you ever know K.C. Michaels? He was a soap opera star. On uh, I went out with him when I was 17 years old and he was 34, and I thought, oh my God, he's a movie star. KC Michaels was on maybe Young and Restless back in 19... The, the name is familiar, but I don't... Early, I don't... In the late 50, 1957-58. No, I don't... Gorgeous I... guy, blonde, tall, handsome, blue eyed Looked like a Gene... A, a Jeanette McDonald's guy, a, a Gene Nelson. Not Gene Nelson. Whatever. Anyway, yeah, I guess he would be dead now. He could be like, he could be like 87... Wow. Could be no, I, didn't, I never, I never met him. I, I, I heard that. I've heard the name. Yeah, Casey Michaels, him. and that was a time when, when they had to really hide their gayness. And I was yeah. 17, looking 12, and uh, Casey was 34. And whenever we went out, he used to try to pass me off as his nephew. And my favorite <laughs> date with Casey was in Greenwich Village. Was one potato, two potato. Imagine I was dragging this famous soap opera star into a little hamburgeria where all the kids ate. It was it was so charming. He was lovely, the lovely guy. I never had sex with him. I was terrified okay, of him. Don't talk about sex. Uh, Why am I not allowed? We don't have no, sex, Jimmy. No, but we don't talk about it. Like when uh, I like this guy. He's my friend. I know, but it doesn't make any difference. There's millions of people like listening. They're, they're all the people that listen life. are my. How do you think we're the number one TV show with 28 million viewers? If I sit here talking about my fingernails, nobody's gonna care. <laughs> you got to talk about the good stuff, baby. So, our show is okay, a, so is your wait, no. our, sh our show is a conversation show. We all sit here and bullshit like we're in a, in a, in a restaurant talking. So is your significant other in the in the entertainment mm. industry? Uh, he's on the he's on the periphery of it. Yeah. Okay. He has. Yeah. What does that mean? He's, uh, not, he's, quite he's, he's not not a performer. Oh, he's a he's a background person. Uh, he's a he, he works with entertainment people. Oh, he's in the managerial position. I'm doing what's my I line. Don't want you no, this that. is what's my line. I've always wanted to do what's my line. Oh my God, I'm doing what's my line. Is, 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 does he does he like manage people like strange people? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that stupid show, What's My Line? Is he gorgeous? I'm sure he's gorgeous. He manages, I think. He has to be gorgeous for you to like him, right? Yeah, I like. Yeah, he's, you wouldn't he's, be with some fat, ugly old dog. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. When I met Jimmy, I Jimmy was Jimmy picked me up in the mall. I was walking in white jeans, white flip flops, and a white shirt with my pure white hair. 
And Jimmy walks up to me and he said, you're the most gorgeous man in this mall. I said, get the fuck out of here. I did. I thought he was an idiot. And he was dressed in these weird clothes with earrings and he looked strange. And he followed me to the mall. And I went into Bed Bath & Beyond and I'm looking out the window and there he is at the bottom of the escalator waiting. Now I said to myself, this is a weirdo. I'm going to have to deck him when I go down there. And I went down and I looked at him and he's following me some more. Nothing happens. Months pass. I'm in there with a date, my boyfriend, Burton, and he finds me again in the mall. He must have cruised the mall all day. And, I was shocked. And anyway, he told, me, he told me that his name was Jimmy Starr and he had a radio show. And I thought, okay, so he's normal in my world. And I said, I'm Ron Russell. I have a television show. And we became friends. I still didn't like him. I mean, I thought he was sweet and wonderful. But uh, cause then we went and we did a, a play together and he put on a suit and a tie I fell in love. He was the most gorgeous thing in the world, dressed like a human. I mean, with the suit and I the tie. A, I was a rock star clothing designer, and I used to wear really wild clothes. And I dress, you know, I've dressed out in John Madonna. Like clothes where it's torn things. at the crotch, and there's a piece of underwear hanging out. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not seen with men like that. I'm sorry, but anyway, I flipped over Jimmy when he was in that royal blue suit. Oh my God, he was gorgeous. So let's go about. Okay, so Ron likes old Hollywood. We've got four minutes. So who's your? Do you have a favorite, uh, like older Hollywood star, like a Hollywood legend? Uh, you know, I was very fortunate because I came when I came out here to live in uh, the '80s. I. You know, the, uh, you know, Jay, and of course, was still around. I, I got to spend time with her, with uh, Martha Ray, who I love. Martha was a dear friend of mine. Maggie, are you kidding? Uh, I, I grew up just... from Florida, from Billy Lee's. Oh, yeah. my God. Maggie was my best bud. Okay, I what about, it. how about, like, male one? Like, I'm a, I'm a huge Cary Grant fan. I, I never saw any of the black and white movies until I met Ron. I had never seen any of them. I'm a big Cary Grant fan now. And, yeah, Cary uh, Grant, I, I like a lot. Kirk Douglas, I like. I've met Kirk several times. He's, he's a wonderful man. Never met him. Uh, like a, uh, Joan Leslie, I was very close to. She just passed away about a yeah, month ago. Never knew her either. Do you have uh, a like like if do you have a do you have a celebrity like since you've worked with a lot of really big people? Do you have like the ideal celebrity or person that wow like if you were going to be able to work with somebody? Do you have somebody you haven't worked with that you think would be really great uh, if you could be cast and work opposite? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's good. You could have used my name, your dog. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to Maggie, I knew Maggie in the 60s when she was married to Rocky Graciano, and they lived in Forest Hills, Queens. And I went to a party at Maggie's house, I remember, with a few friends of mine. And she, when, as soon as we walked in, she said, oh, thank God the gays are here. Could you cook something for everybody? I don't know what to do. The, the caterer couldn't come and bring it. And I was ca saying, when are the gays coming? When are the gays coming? Maggie was a doll. She had a brother who had some kind of an affliction, an illness of some kind. I was like 17 when I met her at the time with Milton Berle. We, we, oh, my God. It was all the people from television of the day. Faye Emerson, all those all those people. I, we used to go to a restaurant in New York called the um, – two minutes. You anyway, it's on, was on Third Avenue. They knocked it down. I was always very nice to her brother because he was gay, and nobody else was, and I was kind, and Maggie appreciated that. Milton Berle chased me. I was 17. Milton Berle didn't leave me alone. If, and nobody knew that he, I mean, all those dresses he put on, honey, he was enjoying it, trust me. But uh, Milton Berle, he chased me, and I thought Milton Berle was the most ugly, disgusting old man I ever saw in my life. And I used to tell Maggie, is he going to be there? She said, oh, honey, if he finds out you're there, he's there. So I thought, uh-oh, Milton, I shouldn't really out Milton Berle. It's all a lie, folks. I just make up this stuff. Did you know Milton was a big old queen? As it was Danny K. Danny K. was another one that chased Mm. Uh, Old gay Hollywood. Cesar Romero was gay. My okay, dear, okay. my, my dearest friend, Mr. Caesar. Blackwell, who I loved and adored and hung out with, Richard was gay, and he made it with Tyrone Power for six months. And when Tyrone broke up That's with him, he knows who these people are. Do you know who Tyrone Power of is? He knows who Tyrone Power is. He's he's he knows the great legends. And I know. And no, listen to this. Hang on, let him let him talk. Blackwell was in a three-way with oh, Cary no, Grant I I and Randolph hey, Scott. Stop that! Stop it, you little no. sissy fairy. <laughs> He was in the Blackwell was in the three way with Cary Grant and Randolph Scott. No, I thought, stop it. I said, oh my, this is all out in public. It's in Blackwell's book, From Rags to Bitches. Everybody could read this. It's public knowledge. I'm not ratting on anybody. And he's dead anyway. What does it matter? They're all dead. I know, but still, they oh. might not all want to know that. Did you know all those people were gay? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I want the world to know the people they paid their money to go see and idolize and worship were gay. 
with the gay people are not only people that cruise Macy's bathroom, you know. Oh. You know, are plenty of gay people out there. Look at Marjorie Maine was gay. Spring Byington was gay. Women you never suspected. Joan Crawford was gay, partial gay. Barbara Stanwyck was a drag butch. Please, I knew these people. Oh. And the ones that are alive, I won't discuss. Is this, can, can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is this show always like this? Always. It's <laughs> always like crazy. this. It's always like this. Crazy. It's not any different with you on it. Uh, it's always like this. No, no. I have such fans that love me. They write me such wonderful stuff. They said, we've never in our life ever heard anybody that tells it like it is like you. You don't give a shit, do you? I say, no. You know why? I'm 75. I could be dead tomorrow. So what do I care? I say what I damn feel like it. I earned it. I'm yes, here. You know, yeah. I'm still here. And we don't hurt anybody. We don't offend anybody. It's a fun show. And I don't think saying a person is gay is offensive. Do you? I don't think referring to a gay person as gay is, is wrong or insulting. No, absolutely not. It's not. All right, That's everybody. So listen up. So you guys got to listen. You're a delight. You, you are a delight. listen to the repeat play on this one because this is a wild one, everybody. No, he's got a... on the phone, uh, on, the, on the line, Ian Buchanan. You guys, if you want to follow him on Twitter, follow him. It's at Kilt Trip USA, K-I-L-T-T-R-I-P-U-S-A. Um, he's a, a five-time Emmy nominee, Emmy winner for Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. He's handsome. He's good-looking. He's fabulous. He's extremely nice. And, uh, and he's we got wanna, great teeth. And he's oh, got I great teeth. teeth. And we want to thank you for oh, coming on the Jimmy Star teeth. Show. And we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas for you and your significant other. Yes. And we want to thank you for coming on the show. And we'll, thank you, guys. Happy holidays, Ron. Happy holidays, Jimmy. Yes, to you too. And we'll see you out west. If you think this is wild, come to one of our fun parties. <laughs> I look forward to it. I shall, I shall insist on coming. We don't away. switch partners, though. No switching. <laughs> we're, we don't do three ways. No switching. We just get crazy and have fun. And thank you so much. Have a happy Merry Christmas. Merry thank Christmas you guys. To you Merry guys. Christmas. Happy New Year. You bye were, bye. You were a delight to have. All right, everybody. Next week's Christmas show. Everything should be fun. We're gonna have.